have to say, previous presentation put in contrast to my presentation is super threatening. So I'm gonna try to keep a super low profile. I have nothing that talks besides myself. So, <clears throat> so I am David Cuartillas. I am uh, researching in interaction design. I'm a PhD candidate and uh, Malmo University in Sweden. I'm also a research fellow. It's quite unique to be at the same time research fellow and PhD candidate. Uh, over a year, I can explain you how I made it that far. Uh, but the thing is, I'm also one of the co-founders of the Arduino platform. I don't know if you're familiar to the Arduino platform. I have to say like three words about it. It's one of the first open source hardware platforms. And that's what my, my talk is all about, open source hardware. So I'm the co-founder of the Arduino platform. I am responsible for web dissemination and education. So Arduino is all about learning about electronics and transforming the way we understand our everyday lives. Because in our everyday lives, electronics are everywhere. You know, elevators run with microcontrollers. In an average car, there are 70 microcontrollers. Your microwave oven has microcontrollers. So there is computers everywhere. So how do we do educate people about how they can modify or control these, com these different computers? Well, the answer to me is open source hardware, how to make things easier for everybody. Open source hardware is about things like this. This is a project I made in Mexico last year where I was looking for ways on educating kids about digital technology by using only components found locally. So I went out in the markets and I looked for stuff I could find in Mexico and we built open source hardware robots that the kids could later replicate when I wasn't there any longer. So it's about sharing, uh, obviously. It's about making things, showing them to other people and so on. <clears throat> it's about learning about the world because the world is obviously physical. So even though we talk a lot about how we can deal with software, how we can share software, I mean, things are still there and we have to touch them. So the worry is about all things physical. And open source hardware and hardware in general is all, all, all things physical. And not just about electronics, it's about physical objects like this. So open source hardware can be about open sourcing anything, your chair, your car, your fork, your knife, you know. <clears throat> but I mean, as I said, I usually focus on education. So I want, I want to try to explain to you about how I see education and how we can transform education to reach the kind of future we are talking about. So I'm a professional educator. I mean, I know what I'm talking about because I have absolute proof about my first paid gig ever. When I was 13 years old, a classmate of mine had a lot of problems with understanding vectors in algebra. So I stayed a couple of days after school explaining her how things worked, and this is what I got paid with. I still keep them in my drawer. You know, they help me remembering and keeping things real and rem remembering that education is about sharing knowledge with other people. You know, at the age of 13, I cannot go around asking for money. And I have to say I had a terrible uh, taste in stocks back then. So, as I said, educating is about teaching people things I know. And I know a lot about electronics. You know, the first thing I, I actually got from my dad was a Com Commodore 64 computer that I happily broke at the age of 10, and I learned how to fix it at the age of 12. So but the thing I, I, I really have learned is that I learn the most when I teach others, when I have to make the effort of preparing myself to explain something to somebody else, I have to put me in the situation of being this other person and explaining what I understand of the thing I'm trying to transmit. So, <clears throat> in essence, I think, I believe that the best educational method is based on the one-to-one -one interaction, like this. You have a question, and I share my answer with you. You need a whole course, then I sit with you for a whole week until you get it there. But we know this is very unsustainable. You know, this will not lead us anywhere. I mean, we need half the population in the world to know our subject so we can teach the other half of the population in the world about something. So, in essence, what well, we need, tools. Schools need tools. And if we want to teach people about digital technology, we need digital tools. And this goes beyond computers, because computers are really good in doing some things. But we need to be able of measuring the world. We need to be able of you know, measuring distance, measuring speed, measuring the intensity of light, the amount of water in a vase, we need to be able of digitalizing all that information and use it in the learning process. <clears throat> One very important aspect to me 
is the equal access rights. This means if you have a classroom and you have one computer for 30 kids, that's of course inspiring, the computer sits there. If you have one computer per kid, then all of them have the same rights. If you have a lab at the university and you have one prototyping setup, you have one robot, then the guy controlling the robot will learn something. You know, I studied in Germany, and our school had 300 students in computer science, in computer architecture. And we had 10 software licenses for 300 students. So I got access at 3 a.m. That's when I was allowed to go to the lab and program, because it was a time in the day when I was student number 300, and when I was allowed to you know, access the computer and get to design my software and get to design my hardware. You know, equal access means that you should be able of getting things available when you need them, for the amount of time you need them, and equally as all the other students. And if we have open tools, <clears throat> we can minimize the cost, we can maximize the effect, we can reach more people. <clears throat> well, we know how this works with open source software. <clears throat> this is an example of an uh, open source version of Space Invaders. I don't know if you're familiar to this game. If you're old enough, you will know. Well, now you can make it fit in an 8-bit microcontroller. And this is an example of something that people have made on the platform I designed. But you know, free software and open source software, they allow for easy dissemination, they allow for cheap deployment, because we can make use of local support networks. This is very important. We can work with local people to support our software, to support the way we use it, and so on. So we don't need to have a remote company somewhere in a different country to go ask questions to a help desk. Well, the same can be applied to open source hardware. If we start to work more and more with open source hardware, we can get all these resources locally because there will be more and more people getting access to the education that is needed to be able of building up these things. <clears throat> this is an example of an open source hardware project we built recently, but I have really no time to go into it. So, <clears throat> I think one of the most important things is shared experiences. You know, when you have open tools, the thing I have realized over the last six years of my life, when I've been working with this open source hardware project, is that people are willing to share. You know, when they get something that you think is a given, then they are really, really, really interested in giving things back. So I set up a website together with my partners where people are just allowed to just document the things they do. And the thing just keeps on growing and growing. When we have like 45 million hits a month where people are just like uploading the projects to share with others because they know what they do is on the same free, uh, spirit of freedom that they are getting the tools with. So I'm going to make a demo. Oh, here he is. So this is Ted. I know, I told you, it's uh, really hard to compare this guy to the previous presentation. But I have to say, I built Ted in two weeks, from idea to realization, with the help of uh, four or five friends, when I finally decided I was going to come to this talk. I'm not even sure it's going to work. So Ted cannot. He can fall asleep, he can wake up, and he can practice Swedish gymnastics. Then he really likes music, and so he built his own xylophone, it's pretty large. If I knew how to dance, I would be dancing right now, but I'm much better in pressing buttons. So I guess you get the idea a little bit. Um, I need my slide, please. I need to make my closing remarks, so thank you. So this is Ted. He is taking a rest after this hard exercise. <clears throat> but I mean, it can be argued a lot about what do you actually learn with something like this? I mean, it's really hard to compare this project to many of the things we're gonna be talking about today. But you have to put this in context. I mean, first of all, you learn by doing this thing. Obviously, I did this, but now that I know how to make it, I can be redoing this thing with kids. But then on top of that, there is a lot about the idea of action-reaction. It's about playing music. This is actually a tuned xylophone. 
I don't know if the music experts here, you notice, it's like four notes on the pentatonic scale, it's perfectly tuned. But you can make it by hand. You know, you can teach everybody about how it works, you can build yourself, you can share with others, somebody can make comments on it. You know, that's the whole idea of sharing behind the open source hardware. And when it comes about the future, because you're here about the future, I mean, my whole talk hasn't really been about what will happen in 50 years' time. It's all about how we have to transform education to reach it, uh, to reach that level we're discussing in 50 years' time. You know, the tools are available off the shelf nowadays. We just have to work in making it available for everybody. So that's all for today. Thank you very much.